Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, well, I got a disassembly and maintenance video for you on this little guy right here. This is the Demco Knives AD 20.5. This is their uh, overseas-made production version of the Demco AD 20. And um, this is an interesting knife right here. This is absolutely fascinating. So let's go on ahead and take it apart and see how the construction differs, if at all, from the uh, from the full size sort of affair. Looks like we got a T10, if I'm not mistaken, here on the pivot. Yep, no problem. No thread locker. By the way, everything was scented and running great. So if I if it ain't on the other side, <laughs> you know who to blame. But uh, yeah, let's go on ahead and take this guy fully apart. This is a, a relatively rare instance of my getting pre-release access to something. Usually, uh, maybe not so relatively rare, but, you know, very often I'm getting stuff around the same time it gets the retailers. But this is a case where the Demcos, having known that I love the 8020, uh, sent a pair of these guys along for me to check out ahead of their official release. So that's always kind of fun, right? So, okay, what we've got here is it looks to be G10 handle. Might be some kind of plastic. I'm not 100% going to... No, that's injection molded, looks like, from the looks of it. Um, either way, it's a fine material. It'll work. Um, then we have bearing... Whoa, there. We have ourselves a set of bearings. We have ourselves the shock lock mechanism at the very top here. And uh, we have this spring, which is currently trying to eat its way out of everything. Um, and again, we can see how the shock lock works. For those of you who missed my initial video, uh, what we have here is when we deploy the knife, there, remember there is a spring constantly forcing this guy this way, and I'm going to use my thumb to stand in for that. As I disengage the lock, it will come rest over here, and there's a constant spring tension here that's going to keep this blade from reopening until I pull back here which point I'm allowed to reclose the knife and it hangs out like so, right? And so what we see here is not only does this little bit here prevent the, the, the blade from uh, contacting the backspace or anything like that, but it also serves as well, a lock. This is one of the more graceful and frankly simple locks. I mean, provided this mechanism isn't too hard to make, yeah, it's a pretty simple lock and pretty well done. I'm a big, big fan of the AD20, uh, and so this little guy here is... Um, well, predictably, I, I am also a fan of it. Um, so, uh, before I go, well, actually, as I go any further, I'm going to go on ahead and remind you that, of course, uh, if you're curious about these little cloths covered in uh, rubbing alcohol or any of the other tools I'm using on my channel these days, uh, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools. Also, if you're seeing random uh, bits of uh, pain on my hand and arms, I've been wrangling a very nasty African aloe. Uh, aloe like the succulent plant uh, just replanted it and it um it took its toll <laughs> beautiful piece of plant but oh my god is that thing mean um all right that thing's meaner than half of the youtube commenters but anyways um but let's go on ahead and clean off the uh, bearings here that should be our last step these are some tiny ass bearings <laughs> look at these <laughs> It's like little tiny dudes. Um, but anyways, and let's go on ahead, clean those off, and then put everything right back together. I'm going to go ahead and use some 10-weight nano oil here. I'm going to say the word go ahead again. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because I seem to be saying it a lot. That's fine. Uh, but anyways, drop the nano oil on there. Not too, too much. I know that's weird for me. Here, I'll over-apply a little bit here. That'll work. And a little bit right here. Easy peasy. Okay, next step is going to be to... Actually, I'm going to lubricate... I'm going to clean the inside of the pivot hole. There. Wasn't too dirty. These are factory fresh, so to speak. Sent to me from the Demcos. But uh, nonetheless... Come on. There we go. Uh, never hurts to do a little extra cleanification. Some factories are dirtier than others in terms of... You know, the way the knives leave the shop. But okay, let's drop that in there. Beautiful. All right, uh, next step is going to be to put the, the, the shock locky dude in here. Uh, and just to make sure, yeah, that's the only way everything can go together. Next step is going to be to put this spring in position. So this spring, as I've already mentioned, will want to fly across the room. And in fact, I give you pretty much even odds that it will during the course of this video. But I'm going to keep my finger here just to kind of encourage it to simmer down now, stay in place. 
Then I'm gonna slip this guy on top. Holy crap. Huh. All right. Now what I just did is I pulled the, the shock lock back here. That allows me to get in there and uh, uh, get everything fully seated. All right, uh, let's start with the T6s in the back here. I'm gonna use some thread locker, some blue Loctite, uh, blue Loctite on a stick, I suppose. Uh, and that will just keep everything together. And let's go on ahead and put this in here. For what it's worth, I've been carrying this knife actually already, um, even before the disassembly. This is factory fresh, but I've just been... Frankly, I've been getting my assets handed to me. Uh, just kicking every part of me at work lately. That's, that's fine. It's not like a, a bad thing. It's just a really busy time, and I'm really freaking burned out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah. I've uh, been... Uh, haven't had a whole lot of time to film in my uh, daily basis, and so therefore, uh, it's uh, been a little delayed, but at the same time, still get a chance to carry things each day, get a chance to use them, try them, etc. And so far, I've been very impressed. This is... this is a good knife. Um, okay, it's a little smoother. Uh, is there any blade play? There is not. We are slightly off-center, though, which I think means that these back guys were tightened down too soon, because if you tighten these guys down before the uh, blade is in position, oftentimes you can trap some tension in the system, and that will require some attention uh, later on in the process. There we go, and we are roughly centered. Uh, there might be a little play in there, so I'm going to lock this guy down just a little tiny bit more. Okay, that was too much. That was far too much. Let's back it off a metric scotch. There we go. That's a little tight. There we go. That's good. There's no play at all. Now, the final thing I want to do is actually lubricate the very back of the blade tang here, and this will just serve to uh, lubricate the interface with the um, the shock lock in the back there. And just make it go a little smoother. Oh, boy, that's nice. Oh, boy, that's nice. Actually, now that I've tightened things down a little bit more in the pivot, I'm going to re-loosen the back here. And apply a little counter pressure. What I mean by that is I'm pressing the blade in the direction you want to be. I'm being the change I want to see in the world, so to speak. And then we tighten, tighten, tighten. And there we go. Beautiful. And we are all set. Uh, what we have here is an absolutely beautifully running 8020.5 here with the shock lockitude that one desires. Nice size. This is good. This is real good. Uh, this is... Uh, having not fully written my review yet, so, you know, who knows? Who might, uh, who knows what's going to change here? But this is a Knife of the Year competitor. I, I guarantee you that. Uh, it will be in the running unless this thing catches fire in my pocket somehow or another. Um, this is going to be in that race because it's a great design. Really, really is. All right, so let's go on ahead and uh, wrap things up. Hope this has been interesting to you and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.